Now, ladies, um, let's start with you. This this has must have been quite a harrowing journey for the two of you. Um, but to begin with, maybe give us your reaction to the uh, to these sentences that your husbands that were handed down to your husbands. Um. Uh, with me, I think the sentencing and the whole experience with the trial was actually a learning curve because I then began to realize that the system was actually oppressing people who have different opinions compared to what they want. So with me, I've since come to discover that, you know, this system actually wants to oppress and suffocate Swazis. So it's been a learning curve. It's been a learning curve. And for you, Fikira, please share us, uh, with us your reaction to your husband's sentence. Well, to me it was shocking really because I couldn't understand why did they have to sentence him to so long because he was on merely making an opinion. But then, uh, what can we say, you know, because, you know, with these things you just have to learn. You learn to adapt, you learn to see things differently. So, yeah. And now your, your, prison, uh, your husbands have both been in prison now for, for about two months serving their sentence. Mm -hmm. Have either of you heard from them? Uh, what are they saying about the conditions in prison? We do see them on weekends. Uh, we're allowed to go there on weekends to see them. Well, yeah, they are okay. They are fine. You know, well, the conditions are not as bad as we thought they, they would be. But, you know, they are this, the, this jail people, you know, they are different. One day you'll find another one, an, another guy who's going to be a bit difficult and the other one will be a bit friendly. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Daniela, tell us, I mean, you are here in South Africa campaigning around this story, trying to bring attention to it. Is there any chance at all that uh, you might be able to still get them out of jail or is this a, a done? deal as it is. Um, as we speak now, we have applied for an appeal. But the question now is that are we going to actually be given a date for, for, for them to to, for their case to be heard in appeal. So we are in a position where we are a bit unsure as to what is going to happen. Are they going to come out um, in November after the judgment for the appeal or are we, ha are we going to have to wait for, for next year for them to complete their sentence? So we are a bit unsure as to what's going to happen next and we are anticipating probably they'll give us a date for the appeal and then hopefully the case will be heard and uh, judgment will be uh, said maybe end of uh, November. So we're hoping for the best. Well, Wendy, let, let's uh, bring you in here. Maybe give us some uh, an idea of what is happening within the criminal justice system itself. Is it independent? I mean, was this a fair trial? Or are these kind of judgments heavily influenced by the government? Well, Lindy, the recent case is nothing but a magnification of a judicial system that is used as a weapon by His Majesty's government to deal with those who disagree with the system, but also as a warning and as a message to would be disagreeers or activists or proponents of democracy. Because in Swaziland, democracy, human rights and respect for rule of law are not necessarily things that are taken serious by His Majesty's government. So any democracy activist, journalist, who tries, even with a single sentence, to oppose that, will pay the price. Maybe give us some details around what you mean by they'll pay the price. What are some of the tools of intimidation that are being used by the government on those who seek to speak out or oppose uh, the current political situation? Let's just use the reaction of the Prime Minister. Very recently, when unionists went to the US uh, to raise the Agoa crisis, uh, the Prime Minister's response was, we're going to strangle them. Uh, every chief who is a footstool, who happens to harbor these people, what is he doing? Why is he wasting time? He should deal with. One, it's land. If you continue to be seen as a troublemaker, you're going to be evicted. You will going to lose scholarship if your student or your child is at the university. You are going to be denied jobs because, by the way, the Swazi economy is so small, basically is one of the biggest employer. So there are many levers through which you can be made to pay the price. But of course, prison has been one of late prevalent uh, 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 space that has been used when, in principle, prison is supposed to be an extension of the, the meeting out of justice, reconciliation and, 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 and the likes. 
but we are seeing the complete opposite to be what prisons are to be about. And of course, as we speak today, more than 25 activists have just been detained for trying to be part of a protest action in demand of their goa, which is going to lead to nothing less than 30,000 people losing jobs in this coming January. So these are all the levers through which His Majesty makes you pay the price. Now, now, I just want to take this down to community level for a moment. Um, we're hearing here from, from Wandile how the government is acting on those activists. But what about the community? You, as, as the wives of those that were at the front line of this battle against the government, do you feel that you have the support of your neighbors, of people around you? Or is there a sense that you're a little bit alone in this battle since the, the government's oppression is so strong? You know, Lindy, we are actually getting support from, from members of the community, but they do not want to be seen to be associated with us. And, you know, I come from Galutlego in Bunya, where there's a chieftaincy dispute. Um, two weeks ago, there were old people aged 72 who were taken into interrogation by the police. They were strangled, they were harassed. So the community is supporting us, but they're living in fear that we are going to lose our land. You know, they're going to take us in for interrogation and we're going to be harassed. So in Swaziland, we're having a huge crisis, but seemingly people are saying, Swazis are quiet, but Swazis are scared, living in fear. I'm thinking we are almost out of time, but I thought maybe we'd give you an opportunity uh, for the closing words here. Just your, your message to those that are listening, um, the kind of support perhaps that you're hoping will come your way in getting your husband out of jail. Well. I would like to first of all thank everyone who has been supportive because we've, we've, we've received su support from different people, different countries, even in Swaziland. Uh, I, we come from a, I come from a big family, the Makubu clan. You know, they've been supportive in a major way. And you know, we ha we've had friends of all over supporting us. And I, w I just want to say, you know, just keep praying for us, keep supporting us in every way you can, because right now we need that support. We really need it.